Hi, I'm Jen from Jen There Done That, and starting Monday, April 12th, Puerto Rico has a new set of travel updates. Our COVID rates have gone up right around spring break, March. A lot of tourists have come in. Puerto Rico is very popular and a lot of people are not following the rules. So we have to enact stricter measures because our numbers are going up. So uh, we now have updated travel restrictions. This was released in uh, Governor Pera Luisi's State of Puerto Rico address on Wednesday night. So we'll probably see some additional details coming through before the updates are implemented on Monday, April 12th. But so far what we know is that curfew is going to be two hours earlier starting. It was midnight, it's now back to 10 p.m. And that means all businesses must close by 9 p.m. so that workers, employees, and customers can all get home before curfew at 10 p.m. The governor also issued a statement which translates as all activities or events in which crowds of people are engaged are prohibited unless there is a waiver. You're probably not going to get a waiver. Uh, the requirement of the molecular PCR test is maintained for any traveler who enters Puerto Rico and the health department oversight resources will be increased to corroborate the compliance of travel quarantines and all provisions of the order. So we're already seeing $100 fines for not wearing your mask correctly over your nose and mouth. We're also seeing tourists and other folks that are not complying with the requirements getting those fines for the mask and if they're breaking quarantine they're getting fined for that as well. So they are enforcing that more. We've had a lot of bad behavior in the tourist areas. Uh, people are ignoring the mask requirements. They are not keeping their social distancing. We've had bar fights break out. We've had a lot of bad behavior. So please, if you are on the island or you plan to come to the island, please be respectful of our rules and just our social distancing for safety measures. If you're gonna misbehave, don't come. Like I said, these orders start April 12th. What we know is that restaurants are still at 50% capacity. That could change based on our COVID numbers going up. We've seen that increase. So again, this is what it is right now and it may change as our numbers change and as more people get sick. Uh, casinos and movie theaters are still open at 50%. The passenger ferry to Calabria and Vieques are both still open. They're Last month in March, they said they were going to start enforcing a PCR molecular test for the ferry to Vieques, but that hasn't really been enforced. And frankly, the ferries to both Vieques and Calabria have been broken down a lot in the last, well, definitely in the last few months, but they've notoriously been unreliable. So a lot of folks have said they've missed their ferry, they weren't able to get tickets. Um, that has nothing to do with the travel restrictions. That's just our ferry system sucks. And we're really hoping that we'll see some improvements there. There's been a lot of protesters out lately and um, they're mad and they're protesting in kayaks. Um, that's also kind of disrupting the already disrupted ferry service, but mostly it's because our ferries are not maintained and they keep breaking down. So if you do plan to go to Calabria or Vieques, I strongly encourage you to take a flight or skip it this trip. Uh, let's get things a little more under control before you visit anyway. Uh, the Ponce and Aguadilla airports are now open. As of April 1st, they both reopened. It was not an April Fool's joke. Ponce and Aguadilla are both open and airlines are resuming booking flights. So we won't have the same bottlenecks we had at uh, San Juan, SJU, but honestly, they're doing a fantastic job. They have not really seen a decrease in travelers, uh, even during the pandemic, and they have done an excellent job of maintaining safety protocols, cleanliness, and just overall organization. So good job, SJU 
and they should be leading the way for both Ponce and Aguadilla to implement the same safety protocols and the same uh, social distancing and cleaning measures. Of course, as I said, the mask over the nose and the mouth are still required. Social distancing is required. Beaches, pools, lakes, lagoons, Chaco Frios, Chacos are all open. Uh, maintain at least 10 feet distance between you and the next pod. Um, and if you're at the beach and there's a whole group of people, go down a little farther. Give everyone a little more space right now. If you want to avoid the crowds, be sure to go to the beach early in the morning or weekdays, far less crowded, and you'll have a more, a more pleasant time just by yourself, secluded, enjoying the beach. Stores and businesses are all open full capacity. We don't have a Sunday lockdown. We're open seven days a week. We just have that 9 p.m. curfew. Uh, all of the marinas are open. Kayaking is going on. Uh, there's still a lot of group tours that are going out at limited capacity and um, they're operating as normal with additional safety protocols. Bars and clubs are still closed. We are seeing some very creative bars that are now offering uh, food menu, dining menus. So some of them have reopened as bars and restaurants, which is really great. But the bar kiosks and just the nightclubs in general are still closed and they're not going to be open anytime soon. The public transportation buses, the AMA and the Tran Urbano are both still operating. They're operating at limited capacity for COVID protocols, so fewer passengers on, but uh, we're not really seeing them overcrowded anyway right now. Um, El Yonke is, is still open. Uh, you do need reservations. They're making great progress on that visitor center. And Angelito Trail is located outside of the park uh, permitting area. So if you are unable to get a permit, to go to El Yonque, you can still go to Angelito and enjoy a nice hike in the rainforest. Uh, arriving passengers are still required to show up with their negative PCR COVID test. Rapid tests are not, the rapid blood tests are not being accepted. It must be the PCR molecular test. No later than 72 hours prior to your arrival. If you have any questions on the travel declaration form, you can ask on site. They have folks there that will help you fill out the forms. They're very, very helpful. Many are bilingual, so they'll be sure to help you. Uh, look at the travel declaration form before you leave. Make sure you have your negative COVID test or will have your negative COVID test upon arrival or you will need to quarantine. And they are saying that they will enforce that more strictly. The travel declaration form does have a checkbox for vaccine. However, you still need a negative COVID test, the negative PCR COVID test upon arrival, even if you've been vaccinated. We are seeing a huge spike in people getting COVID and that includes people that have already been vaccinated. I personally know at least 20 people, 20 in the last two weeks that have tested positive for COVID and several of them had already been vaccinated. They were not fully vaccinated, either both shots or enough time had passed. So if you have gotten a vaccine, make sure you check with whichever vaccine you received when you become fully vaccinated. It could become, it could be two or three weeks after your second shot, or I think it's two or three weeks after the one shot Johnson and Johnson. But check when you're getting your vaccine, when you will be fully vaccinated so that you know. Even once you're fully vaccinated, you can still get sick. You can still get other people sick. So please remember, you've got to wear your mask over your nose and mouth when you're in public, other than when you're sitting, eating or drinking at your confined table. They are opening vaccines to residents 16 and over starting Monday, April 12th. And they're doing a really good job of scheduling those appointments and making sure that people know where to go and how to get them. We're also seeing some of the large convention centers are doing the, they did the Johnson & Johnson shot last week. I know they had about a thousand no-shows, people that made appointments but were able to get the vaccine earlier, just couldn't 
make it to their appointment time and they opened that up to walk-ins. So they were doing vaccines till about 11 o'clock at night at that particular location. And I know a dozen people that were able to drive up and get the vaccine as a walk-in. So we are doing our best to get those vaccines out. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos from Jen There Done That in Puerto Rico, the Caribbean, and beyond. I'll keep you posted on our additional travel restrictions, updates, and just how we're doing here on the island. Bye.